Hey, so we're here to celebrate a life of a truly original lacrosse player. And we don't want to have, this is going to be a celebration of life. We're going to have a lot of speakers. His, his uh, four-year-old uh, youth, they, they grew up together for 40 years, childhood together. Todd Adamol. But we really don't want this to be, this is not a sad moment. He would not want that. And if you think about the great athletes of our generation, they all went by one name. You know, it was Michael, Larry, you, you name it. John went by one word, one, one letter. And that was Z. He was a true original, all right? And I remember my first time seeing him, this little scrawny attackman, more pads than they sell at those shops, running all over the field saying, how does he ever do anything? You look at the scorebook, four goals, three assists, five goals, whatever. And then you would see him out here in his lawn chair. Cigarette in his hand, beer in his cup. All of a sudden, man up, on the field, Chuck Taylor's. It's, we, we went right to a face-off because he scored a goal. So before we start, though, I thought it would be appropriate uh, to say uh, an American, Native American prayer. It's called the Great Spirit Prayer. And I thought that John would like that. And it goes, O Great Spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear me. I am small and weak, and I need your strength and I need your wisdom. Let me walk in the beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things you have made and, make, and my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so that I may understand the things you have taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you've hidden in every leaf and every rock. I seek strength not to be superior to my brother, but to, my, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. So when life fades as a fading sunset, my spirit will come to you without shame. Amen. I now hand it over to George Lavelle. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. And welcome everybody to the 32nd uh, Lake Placid Summit Lacrosse Tournament. Um, we have t-shirts from last year if anybody needs it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things about doing something like this for so long is that there's a silo in my life that's this one week of a year where I have so many friends, I have a real hard time remembering their names. So if you've been called Mr. by me today, or that's coach. because, coach, coach, coach. Player. Uh, it's because <laughs> I've had so many people that I've met who I've known for one week for 30 years. And it's been an incredible part of my life. And, um, and so I just want to say this, that in terms of Z uh, being here, uh, just an incredible player. Uh, I remember, you know, seeing him behind the back there first couple of times. and. And he taught me how to do wall ball like I've never thought wall ball could be done. One of the most incredible things I've ever seen. And had a spirit for the game that, that really helped make it into what it is today. So we we're very fortunate to have him here. And I, as Peter said, when you do something for this long, there's going to be loss. Uh, but it's not loss. I've learned that that, that silo I'm talking about stays full. And I'm, i got to save my comments for tonight, tomorrow night's legend ceremony. But the point is, this is a family that we've created here. Uh, certainly the Syracuse family, which I had the good fortune to be part of, but this broader family of people that love this game and treat it with respect. And so, John, what I've learned is that this silo allows me for people to live on forever. Because I remember these, I can't remember which year is which, so they just keep blending together, and if I don't see somebody, I know I'm going to see them at the next tournament. And that's kind of the way I approach it. So um, I'll leave it at that for tonight. I just want to welcome everybody. I want to mention, of course, Rob Cavavit. Uh, we'll talk a lot about, about those things tomorrow night, but I just want to welcome everybody for being here and later on we'll all do a toast for John and I'll turn it now over to Casey. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my first experience with John Zalberti, I was in high school and uh, he was a Brian Stick doctor and he came up to Carthage. You heard about the Powell brothers and he came up to Carthage and uh, he had a brand new white uh, I think it was a Nissan sports car. And he had a, 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 a toolbox that said Brian Stick Doctor, Stick Doctor on it. And he came up to our town. It was our first experience with a uh, legendary lacrosse player. And um, he, he made such an impact on us that that was the day I said, that's what I want to do. I want to be an ambassador of the game. I want to be a Stick Doctor. Um, then we had the opportunity to watch him play. Um, his swagger out there was unbelievable. Um, the way that he meshed with the gates and, and was a true champion. Uh, s somebody that was uh, incredible in his craft. 
uh, somebody that cared about the game of lacrosse. Uh, he taught us a lot. Um, he, he was an unbelievable person, and I think we all know he wasn't perfect, but he was perfect for the game of lacrosse. Um, he was perfect for us here at Lake Placid, and uh, I want to say thanks to George. I want to thanks to, thanks to Peter, thanks to Todd, everybody for, for showing up here uh, to be a part of this. Um, this is a truly special place to be a part of, and Z um, is here in spirit, uh, no doubt about it. Um, you know that he would love to be here. You know that he would what he would be adding if he was here. But um, I just look at as he uh, and, and looking back as, as a true legend, uh, somebody that will always make an impact. I had the opportunity to work a, a ton of lacrosse camps with him, and every lacrosse camp that we ever did with him all around the country, it was Z's wall ball routine in the afternoon, and we uh, had the opportunity to go. And listen to Z, and everybody shut up. Uh, all the coaches came, all the players came, and uh, every single time he did it, we had something to learn. Um, his, uh, his skill was, was uh, unbelievable. His, uh, the, the way he was with uh, how he taught the game was uh, impressive, uh, more impressive than any coach that I've ever met in my life. Um, he made such an impact on the, on the, the players around him. Um, he was real, he was honest, um, and he set the record straight and, and helped so many lacrosse players. He's a true legend. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's somebody that's going to make a lasting imprint on, on the sport. I, there's been so many reports um, as him being in the face of, face of lacrosse and uh, as a potential Hall of Fame player, and uh, we, we certainly hope we can uh, we can push for that. But um, he did it with style. He did it with flair, and uh, he did it in Z's style. So I'm going to give it over to uh, Pat. So uh, I I have no vested um, right to be up here talking to everyone. Uh, we've all got our own stories and I said to myself I don't want to come up here and tell more stories I think there's too many of us that um, we we all have stories what I wanted to impart on everyone was Z growing up um, so for those of us that grew up with him I just wanted to shed a little background for those that um, didn't know him that way um, I'm gonna I'm gonna set this down okay. boy. I uh I'm a lot better this way, the old teacher in me. So, um, Z was the youngest of four. Two sisters, older brother. Uh, grew up on Patterson Ave in Camillus. And for those that know Camillus, it's not the flattest place you've ever been. Well, Z's yard was about an eighth of an acre. Sat on the corner and it was a billy goat for an eighth of an acre. So you couldn't do anything in it. You couldn't play in it, you couldn't go anywhere. Um, his father was a steam fitter, was in the armed forces. His mother never worked, didn't drive a car. Um, his mother sewed all the clothes that the kids wore. And I'm, I'm gonna start getting worked up here, but you know, Casey and I were talking about it yesterday. The kind-hearted guy, the guy who became a superstar, this guy who was iconic, and yet every single one of us, you wouldn't find anybody here that could ever tell you that he acted like a big shot, he acted like somebody who was above someone, because he had this real, real humble beginning. And he was the guy that came to junior high with the pants and the shirt on that his mom had sewn for him. And that's the way it was going to be. There wasn't anything else. So. Coach Deegan, who's here, and Coach Masser create this program. And Z, who's a football player and a stud and a hockey player and a stud, gets in his blood that he's going to become a lacrosse guy, too. And his father is a steam fitter, builds a goal for him. And his mother then fabricates a top part to it that's made out of canvas. And it was green, and it just went across the top. And there were two holes this big in the corner. And so what he'd do is he'd take that, his father had fabricated wheels on the bottom of it, and he'd walk it from his little billy goat yard right around the corner to Fairmount Elementary, 
And Fairmount Elementary is the iconic place in Camillus where it's an enormous brick wall. And that's where wall ball would be spent all the time. And he'd have that goal out there and he'd just shoot and he'd shoot. And he got so good that for those of us that would go and shoot with him, hitting this was no fun anymore. So what it became was, listen, we're gonna go to 20 yards and we're just gonna pick pipes now. And so he'd just say left pipe and he'd hit the pipe and crossbar and it'd come back to him because what his mom had made, which was just this, was too big. But he was inspired to be something more. One car in the house, dad drove, he's off to work. Z ran everywhere. He ran and he ran and he ran more. And he ran to parties and he ran home from parties and he ran to school and he ran home from school and he ran. And he gets into junior high and starts his career and goes up through. Played for Maddie Palum and I were talking. Played for Pete Palum who for 32 years was iconic football coach at West Genesee. Three yards in a cloud of dust. John Zalberti, under center. Here he is, 148 pounds. And what do they run? Nothing but wishbone or option. That's all it is. And here's Johnny Z running down the line and he's getting taken out all the time. But he'd get right up and he was swift and he was fast and so that's his career and then he goes into hockey and then he goes into lacrosse. Um, he got scared at the end, uh, scared's the wrong word, he said to himself, you know what, maybe I probably don't want to run wishbone uh, football as a senior. I got this thing at Syracuse University, which I was never going to have. I was never going to have it in my life. I wasn't, my, my parents weren't going to send me there, they weren't educated, but I was going to, I'm going to get that now because Roy Simmons is going to give me an opportunity. So he decides to play soccer. And what's he do his senior year? He goes out and leads, never played soccer in his life, goes out and leads the soccer team in scoring. So this was a gifted athlete. Um, and I just, it's, it's that stuff that brings you back to the guy that, the stories are one thing, but the guy, the humble guy, um, the guy who's heartfelt, the guy who, when you could get him alone away from all of this, and just be in a car driving somewhere was just a simple, simple guy because he had these simple roots that were born out of Camillus and a very simple upbringing. Um, and for me, I'm gonna miss the lacrosse, but what I'm gonna miss is, I'm gonna miss that simple guy. I'm gonna miss the guy who had pants made by his mom and the cash was in a little coffee can and um, there was something genuine in Z that um, was there and I don't need to tell any of you that. Um, so I wanna stop there, but I just, I wanted us to understand where this great guy came from and, and it wasn't Silver Spoon stuff. And I'm not trying to portray it for something more than it is, but he was a simple man because he had a simple upbringing and he found an opportunity and he took it and he ran with it. And as I said to Casey yesterday, as Coach Masser said, we lost our Johnny Appleseed. We lost our Johnny Appleseed, the man who was simple but took this game and spread it everywhere. So um, I agree with Casey. We're, we're, you know, we got a lot of stuff we're going to, We've lost and we're gonna lose more here. There's gonna be a lot of young people that aren't gonna get that message, but hopefully it carries on some way. So that's all I wanted to say. I wanted you to understand the man that, that was. So George, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, let's all bring it in. Let's bring it in. Z on three. As loud as we can. Let's go, boys. Loud as we can, Z on three. One, two, three, Z! Nice job. Love it. Good job. Guys, behave yourself. Nice job.